Come on. Jack Clark, watch your step. <laughs> I'll never do it again. You and our studio contestants are watching Richard Burton and Elizabeth Taylor. You'll be seeing more of them in just a moment. From the headlines and headliners of the past and present comes television's most fascinating new show, The Real Game. And now, here's the host of our show, Jack Berry. Thank you very much. This is The Real Game, where answers to questions posed to our studio contestants come directly from the film. We have three fine contestants, very anxious and eager to play our game, and so without further ado, Jack Clark, would you introduce them, please? Sure will, Jack. First, returning for her second time, an elementary school teacher, Francie Davis, and then born in Brooklyn, New York, he came to California and became a stuntman and raises vultures, Mark Thomas. Also, born in Newburyport, Massachusetts, a writer for film and television, now living in Los Angeles, Joyce Perry. Jack, those are our contestants. Hey. Welcome to The Real Game. Nice to have you with us. On our last program, Francie, you uh, became our new champion. You won yourself $275, right? right. Okay. And you'll have a chance on tonight's program to run that winnings up perhaps further. You, we, did, we talked a little bit about you, about the fact that you're a teacher. We didn't find anything about your husband. What, what does he do? He's an engineer. And where did you meet him? Oh, at a very fancy party. <laughs> <laughs> How fancy? <laughs> well, it was just fancy enough to find what I was looking for, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> fancy enough for me. Mark Thomas, you're going to try to win some money away from this lady, and you, uh, you raise vultures? Yeah, interesting birds. Very interesting. Why would, you want, why would anybody want to raise vultures? Because if nobody pays any attention to the bird, and uh, it's becoming extinct, and they're really uh, very important to mankind. How, ma uh, how many do you have? Oh, only about six. And they, you keep them at your home? Oh, well, I have a, an area where they, I pay rent and store them and go down there and train them. Well, aren't you a good Samaritan? <laughs> Finally on our program, here is Joyce Perry. And Joyce, they tell me you were caught in a revolution in Mexico one time? Yes, this was last spring. I was doing a film in Durango. And uh, the students were revolting. and. It was really something we couldn't, uh, we couldn't go out in the streets. We you had were writing a film down there? No, I was acting in, in Lawman, the uh -huh. uh, Burt Lancaster film. I see. Mm. And you do a lot of things. You act, you're a writer, television, right. everything. Yeah. Well, we'll see if you can put all the knowledge that you have learned and all the various things you do to good, good purpose here on The Real Game, because one of you is going to emerge victorious at the end of the program, and we shall find out who that will be right after these messages. <laughs> I'm with The Real Game. As you know, players, this is a game in which we show you some films, and you have got to kind of answer them beforehand. The answers will come from the films. In order to play our game, you have to have some money. And as always, we give each of you with our compliments $250. Mm. How much you'll have at the end of the game depends upon how well you play. But whatever you have at the end of the game is yours to keep. And Francie, that includes the $275 you won on last week's program. Here, then, is our first category, players. It's called Comedy Teams comedy teams. In a moment you'll get the actual question, but first, how much of the $250 that you have in front of you do you want to risk on that category? Francie? 50, I think. I don't you, know too much. You're going to start low. $50 on comedy teams. Mark, how much do you want to risk? Uh, I think I'll try 125. You're a plunger. Half of what you have, 125. Well, you're a stuntman, is that right? Yes. So you're used to risk. Taking the risk. Right, okay. Joyce, how much do you want to risk? 100. Okay. 50, 125, and 100. That's the amount that you'll win or lose, depending upon whether or not you are right or wrong. Here's the question. For years, the team of George Burns and Gracie Allen ended their comedy routines by George telling Gracie to do something at the end of the show. What did George tell Gracie to do at the end of each show? Write it down. I'll give you a couple of seconds. <laughs> Time is up. Would you put your answers in place? To find out what George Burns said week in and week out to Gracie, let's look at the film. Look at this! Gracie! That was a life preserver. You threw it overboard. Oh, it was no good, George. You had a big hole in it. Come on, let's go. 
Well, how about it, Mr. Burns and Miss Allen? Will you look over this way, please? All right, now smile. Yeah. How about a little smile? Come All on. right, now. Come on. How about a little hug? Yeah. What? Uh, a little hug. Oh, certainly. Let me have this. Hold that. Oh. No, no, oh. Greg. Come here. Woo. Yes, he wants you to hug me. Well, never oh. mind. Well, hurry up. Smile. Yeah, look over this way. Now, let's have another little hug. Smile with that face. Thank you, Mr. Burns. What sort of a trip did you have? Uh... Oh, I had a lovely trip. We had the grandest time. I had a wonderful time. Yes. How about Italy? Oh, well, Italy, I was very busy in Italy. You see, I was uh, knitting my little niece a sweater out of spaghetti. Out of spaghetti? And... You were knitting your niece yeah. a sweater, yeah. yeah. Well, you know how babies always chew their clothes. Yeah. Well, I thought not only would it keep the baby warm, but yes. it would be nourishing at the same time. I see what you mean. Yes. That's very good. So, uh, That's what you did in, in Italy. Italy. Yes. yes. Say goodbye, everybody. Uh, bye. Bye. Yes, indeed. At the end of every program, George Burns would turn and say, say goodnight, Gracie, or say goodbye, Gracie. And that's the answer we're looking for. Starting with you, Francie, you risked $50. What did you write down? I said, say goodnight to the people. Say goodnight to the people. May I see your total answer, please? Uh, can, do we accept say goodnight to the people? I'll have to get a ruling on this. We do accept it? We accept it, and we give you $50, and we go to 300 Mark, you were risking 125 What did you say? Well, it's this great comedy team, and I got it. I should say goodnight, Grace. Very good for you, and you go to $375. Joyce, you risked 100 What did you say? Say goodnight, dear. Say goodnight, dear. Yeah. Well, I guess if we accepted Francie's, we can accept yours, and so you go to $350. Okay, players, as you know, now we have our choice of questions, short films, uh, short questions. They're worth $25 if you're right. No penalty if you're wrong, but the first one in is the only one, is the only one to get one crack at it. It's on famous comedy teams, and here are the questions. Number one, what famous comedy team developed the classic routine, who's on first? Francie. Uh, uh, oh. I'll have to go for it, Mark. Abbott and Costello. Abbott and Costello is right. You go to $400. <laughs> Second question. This famous comedy team was put together by Hal Roach and featured an Englishman and an American Southerner. Yes, Mark? Uh, Laurel and Hardy. You're right, Laurel and Hardy, the $425. Third, this comedy team consisted of three brothers. Their first names were Harry, Jim, Joyce? Not the Marx Brothers. Sorry, that's not right. Mark? Ritz. Harry, Jim, and Al Ritz, you go to $450. Good for you. End of the round, Mark's leading with $450. Joyce trailing with 350 and Francie has 300. All right, here we go to our second category. This second category is called political candidates. Political candidates. Mark, how much of your 450 do you want to risk? This is not my bag. I, $50. I have $50. Joyce. $100. $100 for you and Francie. I'll try 100. $100. All right, that's what you'll win or lose, depending upon whether or not you are right or wrong. Your question is this: Presidential candidate Hubert Humphrey introduced his vice presidential running mate on the 1968 Democratic ticket. Your job, players, to write down the last name of that candidate and the state from which he comes. 1968, Democratic candidate for vice president and the state from which he comes. A few seconds to write down your answer. Go. <laughs> Time is up, and for the answer to that question, the distinguished former Vice President of the United States, Hubert Humphrey. For the office of uh, Vice President, very distinguished uh, United States Senator, and uh, I think one of the most uh, capable, experienced, and able men in government today. He is the United States Senator from Maine, Mr. Edmund Muskie. Edmund Muskie, from Maine. At the moment, not quite an announced candidate for the next election. All right, players, starting with you, Mark. You risked $50. What did you say? Funny, I knew it, and I said Muskie from Maine. Muskie from Maine, and you go to $500. Good for you. Joyce, you were risking $100. What was your answer? I goofed. I said McGovern from Pennsylvania. He'll be surprised he lives in Pennsylvania. <laughs> At any rate, you do lose, and you go back down to $250. And finally, Francie, you were risking $100. What did you say? I said Muskie from Maine. All Muskie right. from Maine. You said Gene Muskie, yeah, will I, accept it because we only asked for the last name. And so you go to $400. All right, players, let's go quickly now to our toss-up questions on political candidates. Ready? Hands over buzzers. Here we go. What is the name of the man who served as vice president of the United States 
during the first term of the Eisenhower administration. I'm sorry, time is up. Richard Nixon. Oh, wow. How did you miss that one? Richard Nixon. Don't you, you all feel kind of silly, right? Don't you, huh? Imagine how silly Mr. Nixon is if he watched girls watching this. The 1960 Democratic presidential ticket contained the names of John F. Kennedy and Lyndon B. Johnson. Richard Nixon was the Republican presidential candidate that same year. Who was Nixon's vice presidential running mate in 1960? How would you like to try Henry Cabot Lodge? Oh, wow. I'm sorry. One more question for $25. This former vice president, who became the president, split from his party to form what became... Joyce? Henry Wallace. No. To form what became popularly known as the Bull Moose Party. Yes, Mark? Uh, Teddy Roosevelt. Teddy Roosevelt is right, and you go to $525. Okay. Mark's way in the lead, $525. Francie, Joy, Francie is trailing there with $400. Joyce bringing up the rear with $250. And we shall find out which of you emerged victorious. But first we have these messages. <laughs> As they say, moving right along now on The Real Game, with Mark in the lead with $525 to $400 Francie and Joyce $250, our third category is called Richard Burton and Elizabeth Taylor. I'll give you the actual question in just a moment, but first tell me how much of the money in front of you you want to risk on the category Richard Burton and Elizabeth Taylor. We haven't started with you yet, Joyce, so let's give you a chance. How much of your $250 will you risk? $100. $100 for Joyce. Francie, you're still hanging in there. You're trailing, but not by much. How much do you want to risk? Play I'll carefully. I'll try 100. You'll try 100. And the leader at the moment, Mark, how much do you want to risk? Well, I'm going to make it interesting. I'm going to go 125. 100, 100, and 125. Here, then, is the question. Richard Burton has appeared in many Shakespearean plays and films, but his wife, Elizabeth, has only appeared with him in one of those films. What was it? You have a few seconds to write down the name of that film. Go. <laughs> Time is up, and for the answer, we take you to a press conference where Richard Burton has just been asked what Elizabeth Taylor has taught him. Here it is. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, when we close the doors at night... <laughs> Even I'm blushing. You should. No, indeed, she taught me a great deal about films, but not directly, but indirectly, just through watching her and working with her. <laughs> well, he makes me sound as if I sweat a lot when I act, <laughs> like it all comes out this way. But, uh, of course, I've learned a great deal from watching Richard also. Uh, and he's made me much more independent when we did Taming of the Shrew. I said, Richard, I'm scared witless. I've never done Shakespeare before. I'd the answer, of course, Tammy of the Sioux. A lot of happy, smiley faces, which made me indicate something. Joyce, you risk $250. What answer did you write down? Tammy of the Shrew. Right, for $350. You're coming up there. <laughs> Francie, we'll go over to you. You were risking $100. What was your answer? I said it, Tammy of the Shrew. Mark, they all got it. $500. And Mark, for $125, bucks, what did you say? Join the group, Tammy of the Shrew. And you go to $650. Wow, wait. Okay, players, now the toss-up questions become critical. $25 if you're right, no penalty if you're wrong, hands over buzzers, questions about Taylor and Burton. Elizabeth Taylor caused quite a stir when she starred in Cleopatra. What role did Richard Burton play? Mark. Anthony. Right, for $25, you go to $675. <laughs> Question number two. In another film that they starred in together, Richard Burton played a clergyman who fell in love with a beautiful woman. What was the name of that film? Francie. Sandpiper. Sandpiper is right. You go to 525. <laughs> Finally, in Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf? Richard played George. Whom did Elizabeth play? Martha. Francie. Martha's right, and you go to $550. Hey, we got a close game going again. Mark's ahead, but not by too much. 675 to 550, Francie trailing. Joyce behind him with 350. All right, players. Our fourth, and this is critical now because there's only one more. Category after this, our grand finale, so play carefully. This category, our fourth round, is called Song Titles. Song Titles. 
How much of your money do you want to risk? And I'm going to start with you, Mark, because you're quite a bit in the lead at the moment. How much of your 675 do you want to risk on the category song titles? Well, I love to sing. I'll try 125 again. 125 dollars. Joyce, you're behind quite a bit. What do you want to risk? 125. You'll stick right with them at 125. <laughs> and finally, Francie, you're kind of you're second in line. You're not trailing them too much. What do you want to risk? It's not my category. I, I, I'll bet $50. 50 dollars. All right. Now we'll find out what happens as I give you the question. In the movie, Bye Bye Birdie, Dick Van Dyke sang a song to a sad Janet Lee, in which he told her to do something about the expression on her face. I need the full title of that song. You have a few seconds to write down your answer. Go. Right, answers are all in place. Now for the answer, let's go to the real. Take off the gloomy mask of tragedy. It's not your style. You look so good that you'll be glad you decided to smile. Pick out a pleasant outlook. Stick out that noble chin. Wipe off the fault of doubt look. Slap on a happy grin. And spread sunshine all over the place. Just put on a happy face. There you have it. Put on a happy face. I see two happy faces. Now three happy faces. Let's start over there with happy face number one, Joyce. You risked 125. What did you write down? Put on a happy smile. Put on a happy oh, smile. Close. I better get a ruling on this. That isn't the name. Do we accept? No, we do not. We cannot accept it. It must oh, be the exact time. Boing is right. And you go down to 225. Francie, you are risking $50. What do you put down? Put on a happy face. You go to $600. You are right. And finally, Mark, with $125, what did you say? Saw the movie and put on a happy face. Good for you, and you go to $800. It's still a tight race. The toss-up questions are very important. And for these toss-up questions, incidentally, they are all upon the film career of Janet Lee. Ladies and gentlemen, a very, very great pleasure to introduce the very lovely, the very talented Miss Janet Lee right here. Janet, we're so delighted to have you with us here well, in The Real Game. Thank you. It's fun to be here. I thought that you were going to say that Dick Van Dyke said to do something about my face. And I was going to say, how can you do, what are you, what are you going to do? <laughs> with a face like yours, you don't have to worry about a thing. Thank you. I, uh, I normally don't interrupt the people as they come walking over to the podium, but the outfit you're wearing is so stunning that I didn't want to deprive our studio and home audience of seeing how very attractive it is. Well, I thought I'd give it a try. I mean, I like to try new things, so I thought, what's wrong with hot pants? These are... Only these are supposed to be called short alls. Not, uh, these are not, I guess, the real hot pants. I guess they're not cool pants. I don't know what they are. <laughs> but... If those aren't hot pants, please, if these, they, everybody's saying, please, they want to see it again. Janet, would you stand out? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> if, the, if those aren't hot pants, don't ever wear them when you're around me. <laughs> I mean, any, any hotter than that. Oh, okay. Glad I saved that one. <laughs> Maybe we'd be better off if we got to our questions. Janet, the questions are all about your film career. They win 25 bucks if they're right. There's no penalty if they're wrong. The questions, madam. Okay. Excuse my croaky voice. Um, in a 1966 film, I played the estranged wife of Detective Paul Newman. What was the name <coughs> of the... Of the movie? What, Mark? Harper. She, he's right for six, $325. Question number two, Janet Lee. Okay. Uh, in 1962, I starred in a suspenseful political film which involved Frank Sinatra and Lawrence Harvey being brainwashed. Bring brainwashed Mark? Manchurian candidate. Right. He's got it again for another $2,550. Okay. In the film Psycho, I played the role of a young woman fleeing a crime who stops at a lonely motel and is murdered. Who was the actor? Joyce. Anthony Perkins. Okay. Anthony Perkins murdering. You go to $250. And Mark is still in the lead, but Francie still has a chance. Janet, I, I must commend you not only for your fine work in the films, but 
It always gives me such great pleasure to see you in the Share Show every year. Are you heading it up this year? Well, uh, I'm chairman of the board. Uh, Jenny Mancini is president. Uh, the show is the 15th of May at the Santa Monica Civic. And as you know, it benefits the Exceptional Children's Foundation for Mentally Retarded Children. And it's going to be quite a show. I think you'll find it to be uh, a very surprising and uh, this year, uh, particularly, really, uh, it's going to be marvelous. Well, I know that most years, John Wayne and Dean Martin and Milton Berle and, and Frank Sinatra, so many people show up. Sammy. Truly, one of the great, great <laughs> charity events for a marvelous, marvelous cause. This lady does so much for it that she's to be commended for that and commended, in our opinion, for being here on The Real Day. Well, Thank you, Janet, you. very, very much. Thank we'll be back in just a moment, but first, leave nothing. <laughs> And now, players, we come to our grand finale. No more questions after this, no more films, just this one, our grand finale. It's a famous horse race, a recent Kentucky Derby. A recent Kentucky Derby. In a moment, I'm going to give you the names of three horses in that race, but now you have to write down how much of your winnings you want to risk on the race, remembering there are no more films after this. Give you a few seconds to write down in secret the amount you want to risk. <laughs> players now here is the race the 1969 Kentucky Derby and here are three of the entries from that race one of them did win it was it majestic Prince arts and letters or ocean roar again majestic Prince arts and letters or ocean roar write down the answer you think is the winner <laughs> Time's up. Answers are all recorded. For the result of that and this, the real game, let's take you directly to the Run for the Roses, the Kentucky Derby. The horses are in the gate. The flag is up, and there they go. On the outside, going to the front, it's Ocean Raw, followed by Arts and Letters, Top Knight, and Ray Jet, with Dyke, Majestic Prince, and Traffic Mark. It's Ocean Roar opening up a two-length lead, followed by Arts and Letters and Top Knight. Into the first turn, Ocean Roar opening up a three-length lead, Arts and Letters by a head over Top Knight. It's still Ocean Roar by two, Arts and Letters and Top Knight on the inside. Ray Jet, Majestic Prince, and the rest of the field. Into the back stretch, it's Ocean Roar by two with Top Knight by a head. Majestic Prince by a half and Arts and Letters by three. Into the stretch, it's Arts and Letters by a half. Majestic Prince on the move, under drive with Dyke and the Top Knight. Moving up the challenge for the lead, it's Majestic Prince by a half and Arts and Letters. Arts and Letters and Majestic Prince. And as they go under the wire, it's Majestic Prince by a head, Arts and Letters and Dyke third. Majestic Prince is the winner. <laughs> Majestic Prince is the winner. And you know what I think? I think President Nixon had a loser. <laughs> okay, players, now we find out who won the real game. Starting with you, Joyce, first of all, we had a little mechanical trouble here, and so we asked you to write down on the cards in front of you. Would you hold it up, please, and tell us how much you bet, first of all? $250, which would give you $500 if you're right, and zero if you're wrong. Show me what horse you picked. <laughs> Arts and letters. I'm sorry, you go back to zero. Yeah, I'm, sorry, I'm very sorry, but you will get a $25 consolation okay. prize anyway. Going over here to you, Francie. You had $600. Let's see how much you risked, please. First of all, how much did you risk? $250, which will give you $850. And your answer? Majestic. You go to $850. And at the moment, you're tied with Mark Thomas. Mark, first of all, show us how much you risked. $400. If you're right, you'll go to $1,250. If you're wrong, you'll go back to $450. And Francie will be the winner. What is your answer? Love horses. And you get $1,250. Congratulations to you, Mark Thomas. And there you have it. Mark Thomas with $1,250. Francie, $850 this week and $275 last week for a grand total of $1,125. Have you got some nice places to spend that money, you Francie? You bet. What are you going to do with it? <laughs> I'm going to take a trip somewhere. I don't know where yet. You will be able to find another husband, of course. And as for you, Mark, what are you going to do with your money? I got my eyes on a nice piece of land I'm going to buy, and that's what I'm going to do with it. Well, we've been, been delighted to be able to get you that money, twelve fifty, and Francie, eight fifty. Joyce, $25 isn't much, but you play very, very well, and we're delighted. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the last broadcast of the...
real game under our current contract with the American Broadcasting Company, but we certainly have enjoyed bringing it to you, and judging by the thousands of letters we've received from you, you have enjoyed it equally as well. Yeah. Our thanks to the marvelous crew here, to this fine audience, and especially to those of you who have been watching us these many weeks. We enjoyed bringing the real game to you. For all the staff, myself, our congratulations to the players. Goodbye and good luck. Thank you. Star International Production in association with the American Broadcasting Company.